Welcome, Fun Nation, to another edition of Behind the Bumpers. I am joined here with rookie team and the captains of Alliance 3 at Kettering Week 1, 1498, the Polar Pilots. I'm Versha, and I'm joined by Claire, Ruth, and Addison here at the Finn Troy District event. They'll be covering over their climber, their intake, and some cool sensors that they use for their robot, all here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Okay, so some of the cool things, one of the cool things about our robot is our intake and arm system. So our intake here is for floor pickup. Uh, and this is a really cool system to where basically, we, if we touch the coral, we own it. Um, so this has been really effective. Our coral will then go in through our intake and into our gripper over here that is connected to our arm. Uh, our arm is really cool. So this is a three stage telescoping arm. Uh, so this part here extends to three different stage levels so we can reach level four. Uh, and then this arm over here is able to rotate and that's how we can change our position to score on all four levels. So we've primarily scored level four pretty consistently, but we are able to score on all four. <laughs> Do you mind showing us a quick demonstration of your guys' arm real quick? Yes. So, yeah, enabled. So, coral on the floor, our intake will start. And then that would be the score for L4. And that's our most common. You can do a couple other ones, if I guess, if you want. But that would be our L3 scoring. And then we can go down to L2. And then also down to L1. Well, th that was actually really <laughs> impressive. Can you talk to us a bit about kind of the design challenges that you faced to get it to this perfection? Uh, yeah, so we had a lot of uh, challenges with the design for this. It's a pretty complex robot. And we one of the things that we really wanted to be able to achieve this year, a goal of ours, was we wanted to be able to score all four levels and pretty consistently. Uh, so we chose this design because uh, we use a similar arm style uh, in well, we had experience with a previous arm style of knowing how it worked in that from two years previous in 2023 game. It was a kind of a style you saw a little bit. So we wanted to go with that because we knew it worked and we'd seen it work before. Uh, and then we did some adjustments to be able to score the coral, but there was a lot of figuring out of how to get this to best flow nicely without catching or that, you know, a lot of playing with the angles to make sure we were at the right angles. We've done a lot of recoding and repositioning for this. And also there was a lot of work with getting our gripper to be able to line up with our intake so it's one smooth transition. So there's been a lot of little design challenges that we've had to work through to make it one consistent intake and scoring process. So you mentioned that you guys had to troubleshoot a bit about coding. Can you talk about a bit more of the sensors that you guys used on the robot? So one of the main sensors that we're using uh, lately is this CAN rangefinder. It goes on the end of our um, coral putter downer <laughs> and it shoots the coral when we are sensing the reef in front of it. We previously used zip ties, but those just weren't as efficient as the CAN rangefinder and it's automated so we know we won't miss. Okay. Um, obviously there's a third component of this game and that's your guys' climb. Do you guys have what can you guys share with us about that one? Okay, so for our climb, I would say it's a pretty unique climb. So um, this is obviously our climber. Um, the cage will hook right in between here. So when we want to climb, we hit our climb load button and that'll have the climber go out to where we can actually latch onto it. And then one unique thing about it, I think at least, is that we have a magnet right here for it. So um, when we actually want to go to climb, our cage will just latch on right here so it doesn't move around so it stays. And then once we finally want to climb, we just hit a button and then it'll come up like this. We did have a few uh, challenges with this. Um, we had to really work on making sure our center of gravity was in the middle of the robot. So one way we, um, the way we figured out how to get our center of gravity best is by moving this arm back and making this intake um, 
a little forward so it balances our center of gravity. So you guys mentioned that you have a magnet on your climber. That isn't something that a lot of teams are doing this year. How do you guys kind of come up with using a magnet? Uh, so one of the ways that we came about adding the magnet to our climber is that we had a different design originally that was like a simplistic hook design. Uh, but we noticed there was a lot of trouble with getting lined up for that and we had some difficulty with that. And we also noticed it was really easy that even once you did get lined up, if someone came and hit you or maybe you moved a little bit too fast, the cage would just go flying out and you'd have to wait for it to slow down to realign. Uh, so we came up with the idea that if we had a magnet there, it helps keep the cage in line. So even if you do accidentally get hit per chance by your like alliance partner or if you accidentally move, the cage is still going to be connected to your climber so you don't have to worry about fully redoing your climb, especially when it comes down to those last few crucial seconds. Well, thank you guys so much for your time here today. That was Claire, Ruth, and Addison with 1498, the Polar Pilots, here on Behind the Bumpers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.